All right. Uh, it's a quick overview. I mean, I say this a few times today, but it's kind of where we're at. This is in the southern side of my garden. Um, this section over here is where I still got my, you can see some of it here, but I've got my winter rye still doing its cover crop thing over there. And I'm going to leave that there until probably mid, mid May. Well, actually beginning of May, I'm going to cover up and uh, choke it down, hit it with a mower, and then just cover it up, kill everything off. So I get my other stuff in. But while we're waiting for that, I've got my winter uh, winter crops, or you know, early spring. Those are in. I've got carrots, a couple of different types of carrots over here. Excuse me. I've got a dandelion that popped up. Gonna ruin his day. So he's got some carrots over here, and then that guy, this is buddy. There you go. I'm just a brand new one, so get them while they're young, you know what I mean? Anyways, got carrots and I got radishes. A couple rows of them over just off camera there. Take a look at that. Well, there's nothing to see. It's basically just covered in compost. So in this section here, I'm going to put some lettuce. That I've already got started. We got uh, yeah, we got some lettuce, different rows of that. See, I've got some black seed. Um, I've got some butter lettuce as well. I got some endive, which I'll get going across here, and then I've got on this end, which I'll do towards the back. Stuff that I've started is I've got my just enough here. I got. I'm going to throw this cauliflower in. I don't think it's going to do much, but we'll give it a shot. Kale, Swiss chard is going too. I'm going to go in over here. So we're going to start with a little bit of lettuce action. And then in this section here, right in the middle, I'm going to do a wider wider berth here. I've got, uh, I got some peas started. So I'm going to set them off. Try to, you know, basically have them a couple inches apart along the line here and I've got more peas I'm going to sow but I'm going to build out uh, probably they're going to go this direction here so the sun isn't going to be an issue um, probably going to do three or four of those using my sunflower uh, stalks that I saved and cured so when we look at that I think folks will get a kick out of that but first things first I got to get my compost down on top of all this I cleared this with the broad fork Yesterday, I worked the soil up just basically to loosen it up again, but it's pretty good. I mean, it's, you know, the soil is in good shape. So, really all I'm doing is coming through. I only just got another one of my wild garlics coming up. Leave that, let that guy run. Yeah, so this is uh, the compost I'm going to be using. Get this guy out of the way. Compost I'll be using is from last year's garden in my yard, kind of with their powers combined. So I'm going to get this whole section just kind of shoveled off here. Again, this is compost from last year's garden. It's back here just a little bit for y'all. And I just want to get a nice, healthy level of compost down on this spot here, and then I'll, and then start over here as well. So just a little bit. Just enough to keep me going. Make sure this stays in the shots, so folks. Know I'm around. So, yeah. And I didn't screen this. I don't want to screen it. I'm trying to uh, build up my oh, my little bit solid organic matter in here, in my garden a little bit. Um, it was a. This was basically just covered with a. Um, I'm over here, you guys probably don't want to see shovel the whole time. There we go, let's do that. So this was basically where I'm at now before I had the house put in. This was like an open lot. Nothing had been done here for a uh, century or more than that. It was just basically mowed and kept kept open. We played in this. I was a kid. Uh, me and my cousins actually lived just across the, the corner here. So I moved back here after being gone for... Gosh, uh, 25 years, I guess, how long? Ago? Yeah, 25 years I was gone. This was open. This is the spot I want to be at. My mom lives just around the corner. 
a few blocks away. So, you know, here to help her as, as we all are, she's getting older too, be able to help out, you know, where I can. Yeah. I tell you, but you know, I'm fighting the bat, the losing battle for now. Hopefully it turned the tide here this year against my, uh, crab grass. But anyways, getting this first layer of compost down from last year's garden. I've got to just put another short out. So if you like, subscribe and follow, you'll see that, uh, I, know, I just did a video where I got this year's compost is kicking. It's doing its thing. Basically, uh, turned it yesterday, mowed the yard, had some other more stuff that I pulled out of the garden here from last year that placed in there. So we ended up, you know, it's kicking already at 130 degrees. So it's doing its thing, which is nice. What you want? Which, you know, all this compost was, you know, garden waste last year. And so that's why you save it. So I can just pile this in nice and deep. All the seeds have been, it's been covered. So all the seeds are basically been cooked off and composted. So in theory, of course it's a theory, mind you, what we should have here is when I go and plant this lettuce is, should be nice wide open and, you know, good to go. So let me just move this a little closer here so you guys, you guys live vicariously through me while I'm seeing. Everybody's having a good day today. Um, I know I am. Any day you're in the dirt, it's a good day, you know what I mean? Let's see. Maybe that's a better angle. I don't know. We'll, 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 we'll play by ear. I can always move the camera again, so. All right. So, actually, grab this here. Thing is, I got to clear. I don't know. You got to come lower. I think that's probably the winner right there. Right there. For now. All right. So, anyways. All right. So, we I'm gonna start in the back here. So, yeah, this compost that I got, you know, it's, yeah, it's in good shape. You know, I still have some wood chips in it. That's from stuff I just threw in from earlier. Um, just because I wanted to get in there. Like I said, I do want to have some, I want to have some undeveloped, broken, um, organic matter in here mainly just to help as the compost kind of works its way down it'll continue to sit on the top as a as a mulch so all right so like up over here i've already got my carrots uh started those two weeks ago you know they they take forever to come up carrots are a pain in the ass like that but i've got my uh beets they're up and running and they've got compost on top of them and it's doing what i wanted to do you can see where it's dropping down in the uh um, the mulch is being left over. So with that, I'm going to get started and get my first round of lettuce in here. And it's something that I start basically every two weeks. Um, I start new new lettuce. Um, okay, so that was winter. It's more of the winter rye. So I start new lettuce. And, you know, with these lettuce, they get big in a hurry. So, all right, so we got some black seed. Some black seed here. And like I saying it's so my soil is in such a good shape that I really can just kind of pop stuff in. Just let it do its thing, you know. Um, get work so hard on the amendments and also just take care of it. So this year it would be, you know, ready to go. Um, but you can see the guys are doing their thing. This is just some regular old. Um, like a butter lettuce. Uh, this is the black seed. This comes up a little thick when it does it. But, I mean, I can just put these in here by hand. I don't have to even really break out the trowel, which is nice. Like this guy. But the other thing is, you know, when you're putting in the compost here, the other piece that it does... Um, again, it feeds feeds them for you as well, which is nice. And on top of blocking the, uh, um, basically blocking your, oh, I'm trying to think here, the weeds and everything else from germinating. And like I said, I'm going to leave my one garlic in there doing its thing. These, these little guys should be pretty happy at this point. So here, here, here. So that's two more. We'll see how these guys do. 
haven't had I haven't had the greatest success with the black seed, but I tried a different trying a different spot in the garden, and hopefully that will make all the difference, you know. But you know, like I say, when I'm doing this, like this is what you're looking for with your um with your soil. Like I, it was easy to push in. Like there's nothing. That's what you want because you know you want to throw the roots. Those little guys, those roots that you have, they can just pop right in there and do their thing, you know. The more they got to struggle, the less uh, the more work that they're having to do, the less energy they have to go make delicious stuff. And we want them making the good stuff, you know what I mean? So, yeah, good day today out here. Uh, we got some thunderstorms look like they're coming through um, tonight. Um, I don't, I'm not really holding off a lot of hope that we're going to get much of anything in the way of what would be thunderstorms around here, but, um, you know, it could be the case. I doubt it, but, you know, newscasters aren't typically wrong on these things, but we, get, it's awful early for us to be doing thunderstorms up here. I'm just saying that is a, up here in Northern Michigan, or well, West Michigan, North, Northwest Michigan, where I'm at. Thunderstorms are a, uh, June, July thing. They're not a April thing. All right. So there's those, um, it's going to be the black, Blink, get that right there. Get them in some water here after I get this next row in. And then uh, the next thing I have here is uh, the lettuce that I'm putting in is, oh, what is the name of this? Oh, it's a, it's a type of butter lettuce. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. But pop it in here. And like I say, and I'm, I'll be starting my next, my next round of lettuce here today. But I got to clear all these. All, uh, basically all these pods out um, because I need them to start my tomatoes too. I've got a uh, this section I'll show you behind me there is set up to be my tomato area. So I'm going to be growing a metric ton of tomatoes uh, this year. I think that's a that's a fair number, but out there a metric ton, do as many as I can um, because I'm going to also be building. You guys get to see it here if you follow me like subscribe uh, one of these live sessions just like i did with my um uh with the solar with my solar uh, solar power system that i put in my shed where i did that as a live stream so you guys could see in real time like how long it took to do it you know even with a couple mistakes and the well, not mistakes but the ad hocs i had to do make some adjustments uh so when you follow me live on here uh, you know, subscribe, you get to see these things done in real time, which I think is one of the things that is missing when it comes to the YouTube experience is that, you know, you know, we come in here and you can see like, Hey, just did all my peas. And you know, it's a five minute video. You know, you don't see the, um, you know, it takes an hour to get them done. Right. You know, those type of things. So, um, but with that, what I'll be building out will be my, um, vegetable stand that I'm going to be building, putting in here for, for my neighbors and stuff, I'm going to put a vegetable stand and just kind of put it off to out front here. So any excess vegetables that I have, which I sh hopefully should have a metric ton of extra vegetables this year, I'm going to place them out here. So my neighbors can just come and grab put a little donation box if they want to leave anything, which I'll just, you know, uh, I'll donate up to the school that uh, school or the food pantry that's over here. Um, anything that they might want to, but you know, my area here, a lot of individuals, they don't necessarily have a lot of, a lot of money. I'm in a pretty poverty stricken area. So anything I can do to kind of help them out too. I just, you know, the whole good neighbor policy thing, I guess is what I'm saying. All right. So got these here are going in. Like I said, I've got compost on top of all this here from last year's garden. See it here. Uh, it's really, it smells so good. It smells just like the forest. It's really nice. I've got one, two, three, four more. Oh, let me spin this out here. You gotta go. All right. One, two, three, four more of these. Okay. What do we got here? This is being a pain in my butt there. You know what that was? That was weird. It's like a dead spot. All right. So yeah, great day out today. Good day to just be out here in the garden. Like I said, I, I do this in the afternoons whenever um, in between my client work. You know, I pretty much work whenever my clients need me and when they don't need me. I make my way over here, out to the garden, you know, work around the house, and just try to live stream when I can. And I help folks if they have any questions, they don't may not know how to do this, or you know, they're just curious what 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 it looks like to do these things. So 
Um, like this case, just doing peas, lettuce today, and then starting all my tomatoes. Let's see. These guys are looking pretty good. Oh yeah, this stuff is doing great. Yeah, these roots are going to have a field day in here. This is some nicely worked soil. Yeah, they're going to do great. Just great. I'm kind of protected here. Here. Yep. Now, these have been living in my greenhouse in like, you know, some pretty significant temperature during the day, you know, 100 or so, um, 195 with, you know, 85% humidity in preparation for coming out here in the direct sunlight. So they're, they're probably pretty excited to, but you know, in the morning and the evenings, you know, these guys have been off eating pads for a minute now. So they've been getting the chills, you know, when it's down to 35, 40 in the greenhouse and my other guys are doing fine. They're on the heating pads and you know, they're covered up. So they've already been tempered They're, You know, they, they're done you know, worried about living their best life. They're good to go. You guys are all looking pretty good there. Let's get this last one in here. So like I said, this is um, a type of butter lettuce. This last one I'm putting in, then I've got some endive as well. And I said, I'm going to start my, um, <clears throat> my next bit of lettuce. And I try to do that basically every, every week to two weeks, just start it's been every week so far, just starting a couple lettuce, you know, a couple plants, like row of five that I'm going to pull, you know, maybe two out of and plant them. So that way, you know, successively over the, over the, the summer, I constantly have fresh, you know, lettuce right here to go. And it takes no, no t real time to do, which is nice. All right, so that. So again, just join in here again. I'm uh, me getting kind of everything set here. This is uh, my carrots, radishes, and then I'm getting some lettuce. And then I've got over here is my my brassicas. They're going to be going in. They've been chilling. Well, not really chilling, but they've been nice and warm and toasty in the um, and dive. Okay. They've been nice and toasty in the greenhouse for the last bit. So we're bringing them out here and let them get some cooler weather. Their Brussels sprouts brothers are actually doing pretty good. I got two Brussels sprouts that are kicking right now. So uh, now endive is one of those. Pre I, I like endive. It's it's you know it's peppery. You know it's a different this type of lettuce that you know you're having it. You know, which I like. But we'll see. We'll see how they do. I think I'm going to end up, I don't know how many of these are going to make it, but we'll give it a go and see. That's probably going to be the, the toughest part is getting these guys to transplant correctly here. There we go. So again, if you have an end end dive, it's a, it's a nice, it's a nice green for salads. Really nice just to have, but you know, it's not as common. Yeah, you'll see it in a lot of you know a lot of salads if you're going out going out to eat and everything. Not much. We're not an iceberg lettuce family, so it's not nothing that we're necessarily concerned with. But yeah, so like I said, I got black seed, my butter lettuce, this endive, this poor guy. Um, <sighs> mm, there it is. That's good stuff. Um. And then, like I say, I got all of my, on this side right behind me here is where I've got my um, brassicas and everything that I'll be putting in. If I'm going, oh yeah, that all oh, this endive is so good. I got that taste that just stays with you for a minute too. I love it. These are pretty good. But yeah, this is what I like though. Just be able to you know, basically just work the soil with my hands. That's what I want as far as for the consistency that you want for your uh in your garden basically in your soil that you have here you want it to be you're just working with your hands i mean and right there down to where i need to go to and i'll probably can go down six inches not even miss a beat a pinch on these guys okay for my homies all right so again just 
these are in really good shape. The roots look good, good root system, healthy spot. Fill them in with all sorts of goodness. Then come back and hit these with a hose once everybody's in. Nice light spray. Everybody nice good soak. I mean, tonight we're supposed to get rain, so that'll help the cause. Burr. All right, this is nice, nice and deep here too. This is why I like composting too. So I got this from my uh, one of my corn stalks that I have. It isn't fully broken down, but man, it's almost there. So, but again, all this does is just add extra stuff in in the soil that I want on the top here for the uh, all my little micro buddies to hang out in. I'm gonna try to give them as much as they can they can deal with there. So much help as they need. Because when I say when I broke this, broke the ground on this property, like I said, this had just been a yard, nothing really done with it. So come on, what do you want here? Yeah, okay, good. So this, you know, the soil was in. I mean, it was good soil, but it wasn't going to last the long term for doing any sort of garden work because, well, yes, the grass was growing and it was in a good spot. Very true. Uh. It was filled to the brim with a. Uh, I want to put this extra one up here. Oh, there he is. Okay. Um, it's all clay. You know, we're in Michigan here. This is nothing but clay normally. It's just clay as far as the eye can see. And that is no bueno when it comes to the garden, trying to work. The roots do not, they like it once they're established. Is that clay just holds on to every last little bit of? I'm gonna put this last end dive up here. Well, no, he's different. It's gonna be like that. Okay. So all these guys gotta come out anyways. Ooh, I don't know if those guys are gonna. We shall see. I don't think that's gonna hold up too well, but we will give it its best chance at survival here because he's been hanging out with me for a month. I hate for just to give up on him because. His house broke apart at the last minute. All right, let's see. Okay, well, we'll see how it goes. All right, so that's all of them. All right, there's this stuff. Return this unto whence it came. So with that, you know, they like said, need these back because these are all going to be for my tomatoes. You know, a whole bunch of tomatoes get started later from, uh, in, later today. So, it's good stuff, though. Good day today. All right. There's that. Next up, I've got um, kale I got kale and Swiss chard I need to put in right here. So, again, this is all uh, compost from, I'm going to put this one a little bit further here, all compost from my garden from last year. So, it's nice. You know, plants did a good job. I was able to use my neighbor's leaves and everything. I got a whole bunch of leaf, leaf mold going. But I like to use, keep the leaf mold around simply just to uh, throughout the year for my uh, brown matter going into the compost. So that's a little bit here. You guys are lucky. Looks like I'm going to have to go back and grab some more compost. You guys get to watch me do some shoveling. That should be some excellent content for you all. Just joking. So, okay. Hmm, that's good. All right. So up next, we've got the Swiss chard. Look at his little, his little deal in here. It's going to be next to impossible to see. I'll put him in that big chunk. That'll keep him going. The Swiss chard right there. Zoink. All right. Get my Swiss chard right there. And then so that will be the kale. 
Gotta thin you down. All right, brother. I got a couple broccolis that, or I'm sorry, Brussels sprouts that are living their best life over here. So, you know, let's get this guy. Um, you can have some of this too. Same thing with you. Hey, drink up, guys. Okay, so this is Swiss chard. That's this one. Oof. Need something to help me get these out. Let me see. Here we go. That's what I need right here. All right. That one's ready to go. Perfect. It's home. But yeah, this, uh, and I'm excited for the Swiss chard to, you know, these, these to come in. This is going to be nice. Got the Swiss chard. Um, got my kale, which has just got its first real leaves coming out. So I just want to get this out here now. Uh, like I said, I need the space for my tomatoes. So they've had their you know, opportunity to get rolling here. So time for them. Come out and play. There we go. Good root structure on that guy. Yeah, this is a good time. Like I said, I come, I try to, you know, I'm a business coach by trade. I had all my meetings this morning. Um, all those were done. So, you know, my afternoon today, I worked all the, pretty much the whole weekend. So I've got um, this time scheduled so I can take care of some of the stuff that I want to do, you know. What I like about being a, my work that I do as a business coach is that, you know, I have control, you know, over my time where I put it. I love my clients. You know, the fact that work with people around the country is great. Um, you know, love my clients. You know, but like everybody. I also like when I'm not at work. You know, in this case, which is great, I am helping these guys out here or I get to spend time in the garden, you know, which is why I'm here to chat with y'all, which is what I do. Um, you'll see me throughout the year around this time. I don't know every day, but you know, most days there's always something to do in the garden. So just going live so people can kind of see what I'm doing here. Like I said, this is, uh, da -da, this is Swiss chard going in here. We'll see how it takes. I'm, I'm not holding out a lot of hope here, but I'm holding out some that it does. Okay. Uh, brassicas do well here, but this has been such a weird spring um, that you know I did a test just to see how uh, basically overwintering some Brussels sprouts would do, and they're doing really good. So I think that's going to be my plan for this year. Is in the fall, I'm actually going to do all my brassicas, try to overwinter them. You know, they'll go they'll go their little dormant piece, and then bring them back. You know, and then they'll, they'll wake up once. The temperature and everything is right instead of me trying to you know time it because i mean they, the brussels sprouts are they're doing great back they're right behind me i mean they're great you know they're, they're slow growers but they're doing good they look pretty they're pretty happy they just laid flat for the um over the winter they just they're flat flat as a pancake over winter and you know covered this much snow snow started melting whoop, just started popping up so they're, you know, their Brussels sprouts are probably about yay high right now. Pretty happy. And we, you know, we've had, our mornings have been pretty chilly. So, but either way, these are, you know, these brassicas here, they'll do fine. The Swiss chard and the, um, the kale, these guys, they love this type of weather when it's cooler out. So they're going to be, you know, happy as could be. Be like, Ryan, what took you so darn long to get us out here? We've been sitting in that, hot, in that greenhouse getting all sweaty. Like, I feel you, but I also didn't want to be out here in the cold doing this. So, so anyways, oh, that broke. That's not good. No. Where did, I want this one. Where is a little longer leverage? There we go. 
All right. We'll see how these guys hold up. Like I said, I'm not holding on a lot of hope on these. These have been getting them going and just managing their managing the growth on the Swiss chard has been a little tricky this year, but they're up. They've got a root you now. They've got a root system. So it's time for them to come out. All right. Next one up is going to be my kale. Same thing here. It's got a little kale gets big. We're going to give them this last little bit of spot over here. Let me do this right. Get out of there. You. Yeah, there we go. You can move that a little further down. Kale. There we go. So yesterday I was out here and I did my broad forking uh, to get this whole area kind of set up ahead of time. And then I put down this fresh, fresh compost uh, from, from the garden there. I got to go refill my, uh, my wagon here in a second. So we're going to go for, um, go for a little bit of a walk here. Y'all get to watch me shovel. That should be exciting. Tell me that is an amazing content. The stuff you come to YouTube for Watch it, you know, watch a mid 40 year old dude from Michigan shovel compost. I mean, you don't get better now, right? All right. So anyways, here is my kale. You know, I said, I got to get these guys out of here and I need to get my tomatoes started and you know, they, they wanted to be some late, late starters, at least for germination. So my mom's calling. I'll call her back later. Okay. There we go. Um, but anyways, there's some other you know, late starters on here, but you know, they're doing okay. They look pretty good. Now I got the first real leaves are out. So, you know, we've got cooler, Cooler weather coming, but we got rain coming. You know, they're saying we should get thunderstorms. I'm not buying it. Like I said, I'm, I'm not buying that. We might get, I don't think we're going to have anything near significant or wor worrisome enough. Chunk of clay in there. Let's set her up a little bit. There we go. Yeah, you can just see my soil when you find the clay spots. They're just, oh. Yeah. That's great because you know once again once the roots are established, play is great. But we're trying to start somebody new, new plants in here. It does not work out well. They do not like the stuff. Right. Yeah, you know, one of my neighbors is doing a slow drive by. Every time they see me out here, I'm on the village council and the school board. So a lot of times when they see me out here, it's uh, question time. All right. Oop, put him back a little far. That's right, though. Leaving it out. Actually, that's right. It should be here. Okay, next up. Oh, my goodness, all that clay. This is why I'm working to amend the soil in the way that I am. Get this clay out of here. This stuff is so annoying. Where was my helper at? There we go. Sorry, I got quiet there for a second. Serious business going on here. Plant some kale. And a cauliflower, on the other hand. Let me put that back there. I think about it. The cauliflower and then some peas. Yeah, we'll do that. Cauliflower will go right up against the. There. Mm, we'll see. We'll see. He's got time to make a decision. I got two more. Two more things to kill. All right. seeded so those compost is a good spot like i said i've got a next year this will be my compost i'll be sure to screen it i didn't want to screen it this year because you know, what i have in it i want to add i try to add to my mulch layer with it and that's going to be for to help hold some additional water try to manage some of the uh soil and the way it's 
or the water management around here. We're not looking at a drought per se, but uh, I wasn't happy with the way that the water was being managed in the actual garden last year. So random stone. All right. All right, little guy. I'm holding on a lot of hope on you, but we will put you in anyways. Let's see where'd you go? No, I don't think he made her. Okay, so there's that. Only a little bit of kale, but kale gets big, so we'll be all right. Um, let's see. Do I want to? Yeah, why not? You know what? Just for fun, because I got to find a spot for these. I'm gonna put this right here. I've got a couple, a uh, couple more. Brussels sprouts here that I just wanted to put in to see if how they would germinate. And they, you know, like I said, I did them last year over the winter. That's what I'm going to do again this year. But I got a couple that put that I did a test on to see how they germinate. I had a row of 10 here and I only had two germinate. So I said, if I'm, I'd rather just do it the way I know I'm going to be successful. But in order to do that, you know, I'll be able to test this stuff out too to make sure. You know, the springtime, springtime growth, especially around here, like, you know, we don't really get warm until like July. So this, these are going to have plenty of time to do their thing and get big, get healthy. All right. Um, here, 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 where am I at? Where did that go? All right. Fingers crossed here. I'm not, I get this whole, oops. Let me do this real quick. Get that clay out of there. Man, I hate clay. It's awful. Next up. It's here. There you go. That's good. All right. I'm going to give everybody a little drink here. And then. So I've got. Nebraska is my lettuce in. Excuse me while I spray stuff just a little bit here. Sorry about the terrible, terrible view here, folks. Um, so I've got those all in. I want to give everybody a little bit of a spray here, just to, you know, a little drinky drink. Oh, this FedEx guy. We announced the packages from FedEx today, so hopefully FedEx or UPS. We'll see who comes through. I don't know who's delivering it. Here, everybody. Just give everybody a nice soak. Again, what you're seeing here, this is the top layer is compost from last year that I finished off. Mostly finished. I threw in some wood chips as well because I'm trying to rebuild the um, my mulch layer that I want to have in here. The soil was not the greatest when I moved in. I, it, it, everything grew okay, but uh, I want to have some stuff mixed in in the top here with the top layer to basically help help with any of the issues with erosion or other stuff. But and also to be able to hold the water a little bit better, so I don't have to be watering as much. Anyways, we're playing around with some things here. Um, again, I just got my little garden up here in northern Michigan. These are lettuce. I've already got carrots and radishes going. So, got about this. I needed to clear some space for my tomatoes in the greenhouse. I got, I got tomatoes that'll be starting today. So, they needed a little extra. You know, I needed to get basically clear some space, which all the pods for these guys. And I've got my, uh, right behind, actually right behind where I'm at here. You can see me. I'm gonna spray, put some more compost down. That's a good, good amount. And get my cauliflower in. I've got one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cauliflower. We'll see how they do. You know, this is this these first couple of years are really experimentation more than anything. And then, then I'll get into my peas, which I've got seven that are already up. And then I'm gonna sow another. Oh, off the mic, sorry, folks. Then I'm going to sow another uh, row or two, but you guys are going to get to see what I use with my, here, these are my sunflower stalks. 
from last year that I cured in my greenhouse over the winter. So they are nice and solid. You can hear that. Um, it's what I do with mine. And you can see, I grew a bunch because I'll be using those for uh, making supports for my peas. Basically, it's going to be a, you know, build a little A-frame this way, run some strings between them. And then I will have, uh, I was going to use these for some string beans or pole beans. I'm going to be using these for those as well, kind of wrap them together. Yeah, this is going to be great. And what's nice about these, they don't cost anything, already provided for. And then um, if I don't end up using them, compost them. You're good to go. So a lot of goodness there. All right. Let's just move this over here and then get my next spot in here. So yeah, might as well go through here real quick. I'm just gonna be looking for any crabgrass that snuck through. Uh, that is winter rye. I've got winter rye all over here for my cover crop, but it looks like crabgrass when it's coming up. So let's see, crabgrass, and then this one's winter rye, no rhizome. So uh, I just wanna kinda get those taken care of before I put the, there's only a few in here. I'm really worried about. So, um, but you know, in the way I manage the soil, stuff comes right up. But yeah, it's just it's not a losing battle against crabgrass, like I was saying yesterday. But it's pretty darn close at times. I hate to take it out because you know it's doing such good. You know, it does do a good job keeping the water and the soil together. But like I said, it's just a it's so prolific once it gets going. I mean, look at that nastiness. Terrible. But this is also why I broad fork the way I do. So I can just come through here, wherever they're at, make them go away. You know, all right, looks pretty good. Got a couple hanging out back here. All right, cool. What's that? So let me get some compost down. I got a little bit left in my left in here, and then I gotta go back and reload. So I cover this whole section here. Take the side off this guy. Just kind of was zhush it over. Got to make sure that's an official term, zhush. Let's go for a little walk and I will refill my compost. Trip my little cart. More compost. Yeah, so we're going on a little trip here. Okay. Lettuce doing its thing. Lettuce, Nebraska's in there getting happy. So yeah, good day today. No real, uh, no real worries today. Pretty happy about that. Move back here. These are the days that I wanted to have. Now just get some time in the garden. We're gonna go for a walk while I get some more compost. So. But anyways, this is, when I moved back to Michigan, these are the days that I wanted to have. You know, I got into my business as far as a business coach so I can focus my time when I'm with my clients, maximize that, take care of them. And then when I'm not, I'm in the garden, you know, in the garden, working on the house, stuff like that. So, all right. So, look here. So, this is... Last year's last year's compost here, and then I've got stuff I've started in the spring over this, and I've got two others that are kind of said they'd be doing some whole bunch of leaves there, leaves and corn stalks there, a bunch of leaves and some other stuff. This one collected our scraps over the winter, plus leaves. I'd mix it in throughout. Didn't really compost much. But, you know, I got it sparked a couple times, but you know, we had some. It was cold this winter, so. Um, you know, because it's it's winter, right? So, but which is fine. 
I've got I've got it going right now and it's it's sitting at 132 degrees. So I'll call that a W. So anyways, get this over here and time to fill up. You know, this is from last year's um uh, all of last year's yard waste, garden waste, household waste, waste waste, everything in here. And like I said this compost, it looks it's really good. You can just see it in here. It's just holding on to the water. It smells great. It smells like the forest. And like that's the key to make sure your, your compost is right, is that it shouldn't smell rotten. It smells rotten, you're doing something wrong. You need to, you know, have a conversation about that. All right, so let me get this guy. These guys are a little slimy right now. All right, hold up. I was watering yesterday. Well, that made for an exciting day. Sorry about that. Let me adjust that so you guys are not having to deal with that anymore. Face first in the compost thing. Hello. How are you? Uh, Eduardo? Uh, so anyways. I was working on this yesterday, but yeah, this is all the stuff from the entire year, basically. Uh, in here. Years worth of working on the compost and then these other two, other three bins. One is from basically scraps from over the winter and some some of the yard waste i had and then the other two were basically just filled up with you know whatever so all right uh, yeah this stuff is fantastic like i said i'm not I'm intentionally on this one next year will be different i'll be screened but this year no screening i'm trying to get build up my mulch layer over the top so um you know You'll still see there's, you know, I still got some sticks in here, some, you know, stuff that it's basically broken down. It's on its last legs, but I want the main constituency of the compost to give up its goodness and go down and leave me a, a nice layer of like solid organic matter on top for moisture control. That's the theory. We'll see how, how it does in practice, right? But... Oh yeah, this is great. Uh, one thing I do like about the gardening too, just in general, you know, you get to see the full, the full cycle of everything. So, you know, a lot of this is, you know, there's grass in here from my new yard lawn I had put in. Um, I do have some wood chips in here because I had extra wood chips that I used for the rest of the property and just needed some brown matter. A lot of this is household scraps. Uh, and then in my garden waste, as I was going through throughout the year, cycled in here and ended up with this. You know, this is my compost for years worth of work to get here, which is fantastic. So it holds on to a little bit of moisture currently. And like I said, once I have it out there, it will give up all of its goodness and leave me a nice layer of mulch on top. Uh, which I want to protect so soil, the moisture levels in my soil. Plus, the other thing, the number of awesome uh, microbes that are living in this thing, it's quite a few. Lots of goodness in there, too. So we want to get these microbes, these healthy, happy, ah, wonderful little guys in here doing their thing because they're going to make some delicious vegetables for us that's the theory at least right now nah, i know what'll happen so last year's last year's crop was really good so i've got a lot of a lot of stuff to broadcast today as well so but anyways um so i've got just over here filling up my compost, heading back over to the garden now to basically get my layer down. And then I'm going to build out 
my couple A frames that I have for uh, basically for the trellises for the trellis support for the peas. So it's kind of where we're at now. Let me see. Cool. Just checking one thing. All right. Sorry about that. I had a note from my solar. I had solar panels put on the house uh, last week. Just had a quick email come through. I had to look at Sorry about that. So anyways, just on my way back to the garden here from the compost bin. Just thanks for going along for a walk with me. Good times. Ah, can't beat these great days out though. It's not lost to me though, with all this compost that I made. This, you know, I had to take it over there before, so it's kind of a circle of life with the old compost here. Back from whence you came, you know what I mean? All right, so let's get you guys set up here so the wind's starting to kick up just a little bit. We got a storm should be coming through tonight. They tend to think that there's going to be thunderstorms. I ain't buying it. But I don't think I am there. Uh, poor demographic on this. So I'm going to do the peas this way. I'm going to do the peas this way. So they can provide a little bit of shade, but across here. So I'm going to do, let me see here. I'm just going to do one row of the cauliflower here and then just do, I'm probably going to do three trellises, three or four just certain little trellises of peas right here. Yeah, I think that's it. And then not being it, it's great. It's okay because I can change it. But like I said, I'm testing out, testing out, see what this should look like this year for this garden. You know, I'm in year two on this property. So last year I was pretty successful. I grew quite a bit. Um, I was pretty happy with the yield, but I also wasn't very happy with, how's it going everybody? I wasn't very happy with about 30% of the, the garden. My cucumbers didn't come in like I wanted them to. Uh, some of my squash definitely underperformed. Uh, there's a big chunk of my tomatoes didn't do well at all either. So I'm shifting them all over in the hope that I can get sunlight on them quicker and more often so they'll be warmed up um and then they also get additional sun i don't know i have no idea if it's going to work but we're going to try see what we can do here ah, so all right let me get this guy out of here too you need to go you need to go and you need to go and you need to go okay okay so Get this stuff spread. Nice old thick layer of my compost here. That's what I'm after. That's for you guys to make sure this looks okay. But anyways, um, no, it's, it's good stuff. Uh, this compost has been uh, so all of last year's garden plus my yard my grass clippings and all of my neighbor's leaves basically from her well 200 year old oak tree whole bunch of uh maple trees so they quite a bit here this guy you you come out all right there you go. There we go. Compost it up. Let's go, buddy. Spread this out here in a second. All right. Cool. All right. 
Let's spread this out a little bit and we can get myself some room to work here. So yeah, it's uh, good stuff across the board. Nice layer of compost on here. Gonna make everybody happy for sure. So, big piece here is I'm getting the compost down right now, this area, and then we will start on, yeah, that looks good. So we're going to do our, ah, I didn't hurt nobody, muscle spouse right there, then are built. You know, I may actually build up my trellises for my. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do my trellises first, and then come back in here. Just I don't want to step on anybody if I can help it. So we're gonna do that. Have you guys set up right here. So hopefully you can see all the action going on. All right, so I'm here to here. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna start on my uh, the trellis. For my peas that's what's gonna be happening right now yes yeah, so i got my trellis stuff i need to get going for my peas right now i'm gonna do three rows of peas i've got seven plants already that i'm gonna just pop in here i'm gonna start another set of peas now i'm gonna direct sow some peas in the second uh trellis and the third one i will get out here in basically two weeks but i want to kind of get it set up ahead of time so all right so let's see so this right here will be one no it's not bad to hear i think i can make that part work all right so there's one here cool this one's nice and solid ish This one did good. This one's really good. So again, if you're just joining me, I'm getting ready to start my uh, trellises for my peas. And these are leftover um, sunflower stalks for my mammoth and my sunburst ones. I cure them over the winter in my greenhouse. So hey, here they're basically bamboo at this point. You know, if you leave them out, they'll, they'll rot and get nasty. Um, but if you cure them, they end up being pretty solid and what's and pretty useful in the garden. So can see I've got a few <laughs> that I have um, and I say and I won't I've got these I'll be using them for pole beans also um, as well so there's that and then the other guys I can use here I may end up doing this these little guys for this yeah Little guys plus one in the middle. So we have three, three, a little like that. Ah. Get a little one here. There we go. Work. So we got the first one kind of set up there. Let me get this out of the way. So you guys get to watch this in real time. It's one of the reasons that I do this live also where I do my gardening live here on um, with shorts is, I mean, most of the time when you're coming to YouTube and you're, you're looking at the stuff, the work's already done. And so you just kind of take it, you have to kind of figure out how long it takes to do stuff or take them at their word. I like to do stuff like this in just real time and also just chat with people while I'm doing it. So, okay. So there's this and this, these guys here. All right. So what we're going to be setting up here, I'm just going to turn this just a little bit so you can see me a little bit better. All right. So we're going to set the first one up here. So again, this is going to be three rows going this way. We want them about yay high, give or take. Yay high. Yep. So let's get these, this first one here, second one there. 
Okay, so we're gonna so dig up some holes here. Loosen this up a bit. Get them into place. There's that one. So yeah, it's good stuff here. Uh, again, these are my cured sunflower stalks from last year that I am basically putting into place down here. And then using these basically just as my supports for my, my trellises, which I'm going to run three of them this way. So boom, 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 right down the line. And then at the end, right next to the fence, I'm going to put my... Um, Okay, Ryan, what are those? Oh, just have one of those brain, brain lapses there. Not Brussels sprouts. Cauliflower. My cauliflowers are going to go there. Good Lord. Get it together, Ryan. Let's go and just dig that out. I think it may be the answer. And we'll place them back in. There we go. There. Go cool. at least two here. So yeah, uh, it's gonna be good stuff. One thing I've just learned as I've gotten older is how much I just enjoy peas. They're you know they're pretty darn good. So pop these guys to right about here because they get about to five foot. With that. Oh yeah. So anyways, as I was mentioning earlier, these are uh, uh, cured sunflower. These are my uh, sunflower stalks from last year from Mammoth and then my um, uh, come on, use your words, Ryan. The sunburst sunflowers that I have. So I'll leave room for let me do this. This guy's gonna be my marker. Let me make sure I leave enough room there. Here's my marker. Right here. That's where I need to go. Right here right now. Okay. So we get right up to it. Um Yeah, it's gonna be alright. So anyways, uh they're my leftover. Go ahead for a towel. There we go. They're the stalks that are left over, and like I said, I cured them in my greenhouse, so, ah, which is it's great, because then you get, you know, obviously get to reuse them, and ah, they don't take, which did happen, I have a few that didn't make it, that's fine, totally fine, because they compost, right, so they don't make it for whatever reason, it's no big deal. Okay. Next is just throwing the compost. Next, and these are from this one from my mammoth uh, sunflower sunflowers. The gray stripe mammoth. I got a metric ton of these. Let's run that through. So I may actually connect that to the fence too because I can. Now I'll add just a little extra bit of strength to this. Okay, cool. There you go. All right. I'll get you up here so you guys kind of see what I'm doing here in a second. I don't think you guys can really see what I'm doing. Too well from there. Oop. It's okay. That's all part of the process, right? All right. There's this one. There's that one. Okay. Anyways, getting my support set up for my peas right now. So welcome if y'all just got here. Uh, again, Ryan Howe. I, uh, I'm a business coach, but you know, 
like with everything, we all got to have hobbies, right? So this is mine, where I come in the garden after I'm done with my client work, which, you know, a fair amount. Come out here and just go live on YouTube to on the shorts here. They'll do this stuff. Well, the reason is that, you know, again, a lot of the YouTubers that are out there, they don't, and for good reason, it's kind of boring, but they don't broadcast what they do live, you know, in like real time. That's not my style. And I think think everybody should be able to see, you know, how long it takes to do these projects in real time. And so, like, again, I put ran power into my um, shed the other day. And on Sunday, I thought it was going to take four hours, which I had allotted for it. Um, amazingly enough, though, it did not take that long. It took me a grand total of two and a half hours. And that's with taking time just to kind of BS with folks a little bit. So, um, so yeah. And with this, like I say, this was, you know, this is planning ahead of time too. So if you're, you want to be able to do, you know, use something like this or do this, you got to have a plan for like how you're going to use your, um, you know, your materials and stuff. Like in this case, you know, I, I, I didn't want to buy any more, any more, uh, like, like my support there using my head. It's good stuff, right? But I didn't want to buy any more bamboo. Like, I just, you know, I knew there's, and so what I wanted to do was do what I'm doing here, which is use this, this. Okay, we're almost there. There we go. No matter of. Doing this a whole bunch of times and making it tight. Get that locked in. This will be markedly easier. Okay, come to one. There you go, it's up. Fine. All right, so there's that. Next is my next bit of next bit here. By the way, these uh, Beeberry shears slash Leatherman type thing. Get them off. Big fan. Big fan. Uh, if you happen to be watching Burberry, I'd be more than happy to be sponsored. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Uh, all right. So I'm going to get this guy here. Wait, hold on. We want you in just a little bit. That, 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 that. My neighbor just going by, got a, a guy when I first moved in here, man, all he did was stop by and ask me a million questions about what, what I was doing, what my plans were, which is fine. You know, like I said, neighbors, got to test me out. And then once they realized I was from here, I actually lived here, grew up here, and I left. I guess I was in the military for, for quite a while. <clears throat> once that was realized that I was a thing, all of a sudden I was, I was in the club. I want to make sure this guy is in the square here. Real quick before I go ahead and tighten this up. So anyways, work on my trellises for my peas here. It's kind of... All right, so that is where I need it to be. So... All right. So going on good here. Everybody here is having a good day. Um, hopefully you're getting the sunshine that we are because this stuff is great right now. I will tell you what. This is some great sunshine. Know where you guys at today but um i'm hoping you're having a good day and it's and it's warm because lord knows we need it after that winter being chilly as it was let's do that one more here there is the last there it is good tie this off here yeah i'm loving these these days i was actually out 
t-shirt mowing yesterday. Get some, you know, got to get some sun on the guns there. Don't like to have too much sun on there, you know what I mean? But uh, they still want to have it. So, anyways, for my peas here, I got one of three. Still got to tighten that one up, and everything's going to get tightened up a little bit more here in a bit. Um, but yeah, just see how it's going. So I got one of three. There's be one, two here, and then behind it, I'm going to be just dropping in my cauliflower, uh, a couple of them, uh, because again, the cauliflower take a little bit. These peas, I've got seven. So I'm going to pop in this one here. I'm going to direct sow some peas in the middle one. And then two weeks from now, I'm going to drop in my next set of peas in this one. So I'll have three different, um, you know, groups of them. But we're going to get all three of these up right now. So with that, if you guys haven't, um, so with this, I'm on, you know, pretty much every afternoon. Not every afternoon, but most afternoons. Just doing live in the garden when I got a chance. This is the Beeberry. I don't really know if that's how to pronounce it, but it looks like off of Amazon. This thing is great. A uh, set of shears and a little Leatherman. Not sponsored, but it sits right on your belt here. Stuff's fantastic. Highly recommend it. Uh, yeah, it's really great. Get you, get you get you one if you don't have one. Get you three, whatever. Again, I'm not sponsored. All right. So anyways, get this thing tightened off here. We'll work on firming it up in a little while. But for right now, we all good. This is down pretty far. Oh, there. I'll just gotta get, get everything kind of rigid here. I'm gonna do one more. But like right now, what I want is let me just tie this off. Try a different method here, real quick. Wasn't really much of a Boy Scout, so there's gonna be some people watching my knots, like, oh, that's never gonna stay, that's gonna come out, or whatever. Well, the possibility. Used to have a really good joke before I got kicked out, but I don't think it's uh, not really PC anymore to say it, so we'll skip that. But I actually was asked to leave Boy Scouts when I was younger. Got into a bit of a tussle with the um, scout leader's boy, uh, son. He wanted to fight, so we did, and he lost some teeth. It was unfortunate. Um, for him and me, but you know, it's one of the things I just think back to is like, I think we were fighting over T-ball of all things, you know, we had even teams and he wanted to come in and play and he tried to pull the, Hey, I'm the, you know, my dad's a scout leader. You got to let me play. And I was like, I don't think so. He pushed me. I, you know, I escalated and decided that, you know what, he needed to Lose a tooth, I guess. That was my my theory there. Stupid, but um, and that's never really the answer. We all know that. He didn't bother us about T-ball ever again, though. So there might be there might be another lesson in that too. But either way, definitely not something I a big fan of. There's that first one. So you can see here, just getting this tightened up right now. Uh, I'm going to come through and you know. Reseed everybody, make sure they're good. That's my first one. And again, I'm going to get my peas planted right through here, run a string back and forth, let them do their thing. That is the first of three that we're going to have. I need to put another stake, another one down here. Make sure I don't step on any of my brassicas that I put in, in my lettuce uh, earlier. So I hope everybody's doing having a good day today. It's a nice day out here for sure. Uh, all right, so you two, I think I'll use. Yeah, this should get some looks from my neighbors for sure. I'm, that's going to be pretty funny. I already know that they're going to be like, "What in the world is that guy doing now?" Till they see my delicious peas coming up, and they're like, "Oh, this guy's smart. Look at him." He's brilliant. At least that's the theory. Let me do this. I think I'm going to cross them over here. And then time off there so we get, yeah, do them next to each other. So they're all independent. Yeah. Yeah. Again, they're just peas. They fall down their peas. You know, it's like, 
69 cents for a can of peas. Not gonna, not looking to break the bank on this thing. Just, you know, we do get some strong winds here, but I think I'm gonna hold, hold out hope that somehow, some way, my peas are gonna be able to do just fine, or the supports here will, will be able to make it. Me holding out hope. We shall see. All right, so let's get this, this one in right here. Yeah. There's that one. Cool. Let me just get this one in real quick. Same thing. There we go. Oh, I was looking for that. So when I find stuff in the garden, I'm missing ah, the joys of it. So hopefully you're having a good day today. Uh, again, wherever you're at, it's a good day. Hanging out on shorts, watching, you know, sharing some time with me. I appreciate it. I look my... See. This one this is pretty solid. And here we go. This one. Oh, that's huge. I forgot. These are for my mammoth. Good lord, that guy was big. Uh, don't need that one up. These are no flipping joke, though. This guy's gonna be stuff's funny at this point. Just the size of them. All right. Let's see. Yeah, I almost just want to turn that off, man. Oh, uh, as I said I do love being back here too because we got um, there's some American uh, some bald eagle eagle nests around here, so they're always flying over. Um, pretty cool. Just any chance you get to see those, they're always they're always pretty cool to see. When I was younger, they there was only you can only see them every now and again. I'm older, we're seeing them all the time. Oop, there we go. All right. Like I said, this is uh. This thing is great. I love this. Those clippers are the uh, my shears. I'm glad I picked those up. I'm gonna actually order some more off Amazon, I believe. I believe I will. So again, um, it's good stuff over here. Just getting for my peas, getting them all squared away. These are just the supports for my peas. Uh, just the initial setup more than anything this here and here here oh there's that one and yeah this this oh this is nice i love about my soil right now worked hard on it last year then uh did my broad forking on it yesterday to loosen everything up and definitely paying off it is loose as they come um don't think that's quite right angle seems to be off there we go here yeah i think that'll be okay let's go ahead and get that in so uh welcome Thanks for all joining today. This is, you know, I don't get much better than this. Hopefully this is slink just like that. That's what we're looking for. So let's get stay right there. Cool. Set up right now for my peas. You stay put. You stop that. Where's my string at? 
All right, let's get this section right here over. Yeah, again, the reason why I'm doing this and, you know, this isn't a long form video and everything is, I mean, I do those. You can see on some of businessguys.com, you give me a subscribe, you can see it, but end of the day, uh, I just like doing these live. Now, if you have, you know, I get to chat with people. You know, that's more of my style than anything else. So I guess the thing that bothers me the most about long form, it's enjoyable, it's, you know, if you, for money purposes, obviously, if you're doing this, you know, if this is for your living, <clears throat> you got to be good at the long form, right? But and I just like to be able to teach in real time. It's that uh, interaction piece is my favorite with folks. You know, anybody that's ever taught before, you know what I mean. Just the difference when you get to chat with people. Let's bring that right over. There you go. All right. There we go. This piece here. Two, 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 two. Okay, you will find your spot. I believe in you. All right. Let's tie this off here. It's okay, if it's loose on this first go around, I'm going to come in and tighten everybody up once we're once we're up. Yeah. You know, as these guys are, you know, being stable for more growth and everything, you know, you got to come back and make adjustments. But you know, first initial bits here are going to be nice. And I want these guys. Leaning in a little bit. Grab my rope. I see what I'm doing. So I'm attaching them to the far side of my fence post over there, uh, basically along my perimeter fence. So that way they're locked in on that end to provide some stability. And then, like saying, this is that direction is south. So they are. Uh, so that way they're not blocking all this, the shade coming this way, you know, because I'd have to have them back here and then have row and row, but then I'd have shade going this direction. And if I do them this way, they're all aligned with the sun. They'll get plenty of sun. Be happy little peas, you know. And then on this side over here, oops, this side over here is where I'll start with my, my beans here in a little while. Get them in. So, yeah. I wonder if I could do four. Four might be pushing it. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. All right, right now I got, uh, I'm thinking three, but I may be able to do four. Let's see what I can do. All right, so let's get this guy tied on. Pull you this way. So there's a little tension. See, got to tie this off first. Couldn't ask for a better day today, though. Man, is it ever nice. Wind isn't too bad. We got rain and yuck coming in here uh, uh, in a little while. But, um, you know, later tonight into tomorrow and the next day, I think it's just supposed to be rain, rain, followed by more rain, my understanding. So, which is fine. It is what it is. Okay. Let me... Um, all right. Okay, there's that. Okay, there we go. Tie this last bit off. One more. All right, let's tie a little knot here. Be all good. 
so yeah, like I said, I had to get all these in, all this stuff out today. And it's it's time. They're you know they're they're up. They'll do fine in the in the cooler weather. I mean, heck, they're brassicas and peas. That's what they're supposed to do, right? Hello, hello, CR seven fan. What's happening? Oh yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> please. Um, no, I know it is what it is. You know, um, the other side of this too is you know I don't I do some long form, but this is why I do it. Is you know if anybody has any questions or talking about what I'm doing here? You know what I mean? Um, the other piece is I like to do it people to see what how long this stuff actually takes. I mean, how many times have you watched one of those long form videos and you're like, oh yeah, uh, do these couple things and you're done and ends up being like a six hour project. So. You know, it's when I'm out here, I like to be out here, just kind of talk about what I'm doing. So, um, please, you know, subscribe, like, share it. If you, you know, if you, if you know some folks you think should be watching me, I'd love to, any help you can get, you know. Um, so the other piece here, but it, thank you very much. So anyways, these are my peas that I'm doing. Um, since you're on, I really appreciate it. Thank you. So give you kind of a walkthrough what I've been doing so far. So since you just came on, I've got. Carrots. This is the carrots were carrots and radishes were sown uh, a couple weeks ago. They're starting to come up. Carrots are they take their time. They're always a little late. Um, I have to do a whole bunch of tomatoes, so I needed room to clean out some of my pods. So I've got uh, three different types of lettuce and my brassicas, my kale, Swiss chard are going here, and I've got cauliflower that I'm going to put basically right up against the edge of the fence, right over there. There's enough room. For them to come up and do their thing and then these are oh you did well you can always if you you know if you've got a one spot with a little bit of um like a window or anything with any sort of light or even just a front door or something you can put it on it um you can get started it's you know it's where i had to do it i was in the military a lot of times i was always growing something somewhere but but yeah these are all for my peas um and again all of these that you see here these are actually from my sunflowers this is these are sunflower stocks that i cured in my greenhouse over the winter so they're basically here that they're basically bamboo at this point um but you know i didn't have to pay for them and nobody don't ever plant bamboo because that stuff is worse than mint it goes everywhere so um i gotta tap this last bit here but yeah and what you see down here this isn't um this isn't soil this is compost from last year my last year's compost that I brought over and put down after I went through and did my broad fork down here to kind of loosen everything up. And um, so this way the compost is given good bacteria back into there, but also as it gives up its goodness and goes down, it leaves like a little mulch for me on top to help with moisture control. So that's kind of the idea there. So, so let me get this last bit in here. And again, when I do my peas, they're not big enough to be strung up yet, but you'll see when I get them planted, it's literally, I'm just running a uh, string back and forth here so that they can just, every time they grow up a little bit, just add another string and they'll just make their way up. And, you know, they usually top out about five foot, you know, I'm fine. I'm, like I said, I'm a solid five, nine and three quarters over here. So, all right, let's get this last bit here. We had no great day out here. Um, where, are you, where are you guys at? I'm here in Michigan. Um, we're in this good weather out here. So it's definitely nice. Definitely nice day out to be able to do this. And again, for those that don't know, I'm, this is, I'm also a business coach. So if you go through here, you're going to see some business um, like shorts and other videos about, you know, ways to do better in your business. I kind of do both on my uh, thing here. So Abu Dhabi, yeah, I'm telling you, you should be able to, man, you, you got great weather to grow everything. So, load it up. That I'd be doing in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, if you can find a little spot to put something in, I know you guys got plenty of water over there. So, find you some seeds, put it in the ground, and you will be amazed at what happens. Yeah, tomatoes. Tomatoes definitely grow well over there, for sure. But anyways, ah. Uh, but anyway, um, this used to be. Uh, basically just an open field, an open lot with just grass on it until I moved in last year. So, um, you know, I'm still working on getting the, the actual ground set up. 
you know, still has a lot of, still has a lot of clay in it. And so I'm, you know, planting a lot of stuff, cover crops and other things to get in there to help break up that. Yeah. It's got some give back and forth, but ah, that's to be understood. Once it gets in, gets set a little bit better, we'll be fine. Yeah, it's just peas. It's not like I'm trying to hold up cantaloupes or anything. Okay, so right, on my next one. Oh, I do want to cut that down because I will whack my head on that. So, again, I'm not that tall, but this also isn't that high up. Yeah. Okay, there's that. There we go. No more whacking my head on that. At least I didn't give myself a chance to do it because I would have, and y'all would have been laughing pretty hard at that, which has been well-deserved too because that would have been pretty darn funny. All right, uh, next two. Oh, beans. This one, too small. This one. These two will be okay for this one. Get these guys over here. Sorry about that. I'm going to disappear for a minute there. I'm going to get my next set here. I've got like 50 of these. Not too many. Maybe 30. Do some, do some public school math to make sure I get that right. Yeah. So, yeah, I think three is going to be the magic number here. Three sets of these. This is here. But yeah, um, you know, anywhere you can, you know, this is a uh, you know one of the reasons I get as a business coach, but this is also just where I get to reset and kind of do my time too out here in the sun, get to enjoy myself a little bit and just relax, use my brain on something other than you know business personnel stuff to be able to help my clients. So I'm refreshed, you know, like whenever they need me because there's times I, you know, I do concierge type business coaching, so when my clients need me, you know, I need to be refreshed and ready to go you know they call me you know pretty much any time you know they know 24 7 if they need something they should be calling me like that's the expectation so gotta kind of keep my head straight on stuff but anyways the other part of the talk about was uh yeah this weekend i had a new new clients that i started with a trucking company and man they were great so great they came ready to you know, everything you're looking for when it comes to coaching or if you've ever done any teaching, it's the same same principle. You got people that are engaged and like ready to go. It makes everything so much easier. These these folks were asking all like all the right questions. I know how they can, you know, because they want to be able to do better and take care of their teams, you know. I just thought that was great. But for me personally, you know, that's why I'm in the business. So when you get get a team that comes in and like, let's go, let's do it. So anyways, uh so yeah, it's really nice here. This is, I'm still a month and a half away to when I can put a lot of my other stuff in the ground uh, just because of our last frost date. But these, um, the stuff I'm putting in right now, they're really cold hardy. Peas obviously are cold hardy. Brassicas, um, they're extremely cold hardy. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, again, uh, it means a lot, you know, end of the day, I'm just here to try to help people as much as I can, you know, but with these, these cold, the, these cold hardy, uh, plants out here, it doesn't hurt to get them out here. You know, they've been in the greenhouse, not chilling. It's been like 105 in the greenhouse for the last month, but, um, you know, they're ready to go. They've been, you know, in the, in the it's 105 during the day and then it drops down to you know 40 at night so they're already you know they're already hardened off they're ready to go but um okay next spot need to get these in here yeah so the wife she's going to be doing some uh oh what is she making tonight she wants to make she makes this like asian salad thing i don't even know what the name of it is 
but it's really good. I love it when she makes it. One, because I'm not, I don't have to cook. <laughs> That's always a nice thing. But the other spot is, uh, I do enjoy. Uh, again, I lived, in, we lived in Guam and Hawaii for a while, so we kind of got spoiled. We have an Asian, you know, Asian fare everywhere. Asian cooking isn't something that is, ex, you know, kind of ah, prevalent here in Michigan where I live. I, when I say it isn't really prevalent, I mean it's non-existent. <laughs> That's really what I mean by that. So, um, but it is nice to be able to hear. Oh, what other fruits or veggies do I have growing? So, um, you get you guys want to go look in the greenhouse? Let's go for a walk. Let's go for a walk in the greenhouse. I'll show you what I got here. So, if you aren't aware, you see all this, all that down there. That's uh, winter rye. So that is a cover crop. It's meant to basically just live in the ground uh, and keep the soil alive until you get your other stuff in. Those are Brussels sprouts. Um, I overwintered them, so I'm getting here where I'm going to start trimming them down so they can do their Brussels sprout things. You can eat these. This is great, but, you know, with Brussels sprouts, you always want to have this, so. Um, let's see. The Brussels sprouts are great, though. All right. Um, in the greenhouse, this is mostly, I've got my mama's flowers in here. That's actually probably the thing you're going to laugh the most about. Let me turn off this fan here so you guys can hear me a little bit. All right, so let's see here. Yeah, I need a little break. I've been working on stuff for a bit too long here. So, uh, I'm making my way down the line here. So, I've got oregano here. These are cucumelons. They're basically little cucumbers, about this big. They look like that. They grow on a vine, grow all over the place. I've never grown them before, but. Uh, they were recommended, so we'll give it a try. So these are zinnias. Uh, a lot of the stuff my mom wanted me to start some flowers for, so I thought I'd give it a, give it a roll. Um, I've got a couple different, just started another set of tomatoes that are going. Um, I've got some that are two months along. Those are four past germination. They're two and a half weeks past germination. So, you know, I'd like to have kind of my tomatoes staggered. And then I'm getting ready to start 60 tomato plants for my canning. Okay, these are called Cleomies. It's a different type of, you know, flower that's out there. Um, these are Impatiens. Those are Petunias. I've got more Petunias down there that I just started. Those are called a Hollyhock. It's another type of flower. So, like, a lot of this is flowers basically to get stuff going. Like, my growing season in Michigan is really doesn't start till June, so I want to have all my flowers and everything ready to go for then. Um, additionally here, I guess I can show you this. These, ah. So on this side over here, these are cucumbers. I got them all rolling. And then on this side, I've got my uh, sunflowers. They are dwarf sunflowers that are meant for uh, basically they go in containers and stuff like that. They're pretty chill. Let's see. Next bit that I got here is, uh, these are marigolds, marigolds, and more marigolds. Um, my mom wanted marigolds, so we just did a ton of them. Uh, we've got some more oregano going. These are, these are called Mexican sunflowers. They end up in a bush that's pretty large, to be quite honest. Uh, lots of red flowers, and then I've got on the bottom here, I've got my lavender and some other uh, uh, tomatoes going. So, then on the far side of the house, I have my um, uh, fruit trees are planted. So, I've got apple and peach, pear, and cherry. And I got something called pawpaw, they're getting delivered uh, probably next week. They'll be in, so I got to set them. Okay, so where was I? Okay, good stuff. Let me get this thing going here. On my next piece. Oh, that's not that one. Well, that's going to keep me from stepping on stuff. Let's just keep that there. All right, this big guy here. It's been good space. Cut him off, get him going. So hopefully you got a good look there um, at the greenhouse. I think there's not no worries. 
be back out there again. I'm out there all the time, pretty much multiple times throughout the week because there's always something to do in the greenhouse. Just like there's always something to do in a garden, right? Okay, so let's get this rolling. Like I saying, all my fruit trees are doing uh, really good. They all are. Uh, it's nice to see them. You know, I got them in the ground last two weeks ago. Two weeks, yeah, two weeks ago now, and they're all blossoming, covered in bees, living their best life. So it's cool. Like that a lot. Again, use the phrase. I love that for us, right? Um, yeah, I love these shears. I absolutely love them. So yeah, I've got just gonna do get these three done. Let's get this guy started here. Yep. So like I said, hopefully you guys like the little tour of the greenhouse in there. It's you know it's kicking at a hundred and. Uh, it was 105 in there. You know, the fan's doing its job. You know, it's keeping it somewhat, you know, from being obnoxious. But, you know, end of the day, it's it's toasty in there. Is what you want. But then, you know, during... Oh, good. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, you know, I... My... my uh, Lost you there for a minute, but, you know, my, my fruit trees are doing really good. Like I said, they're covered... They've got the blossoms everywhere. They're doing great. So, I'm real happy about that because, you know, I just want... And day on this property, my overarching goal is to make sure I'm everything I'm do, I'm always producing some sort of calories is kind of the goal. So, oh, and I got my strawberries too. Those are all, those all have come up in my, I've got a separate um, uh, raised bed for those, which is pretty nice. They, they are all are kicking. I did those from uh, rootstock. You can actually see a video that I did uh, on the channel. It's a quick little video. It's like six minutes just of how to, how to actually grow strawberries from rootstock you know is what it is it's a quick little video just so so folks can see it because i don't think folks realize um strawberries are perennial like they live forever you know for a very long time at least so <sighs> all right let's get that here let's get this next one set up making good time today though like that time for basically to load everybody up I gotta water everyone in my in the greenhouse after this they be thirsty for reasons okay let's get this guy get this guy locked in so if you guys have any any other any other questions about uh gardening or you know i mean off chance you need business advice i do that as well too that's my job but you know and hey, this is just meant to be a, meant to be a good time. So I'm not going to put that through the metal there. I see bad things happening with that. So let's get this here. Sorry, I don't mean to be mumbling, but uh, got to talk through some of this stuff. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, again, all of these, all of these will get tightened up later as well. which is super important because we do get some pretty significant winds around here ever since COVID. No, I'm just joking. We've always had good winds around here, but they've definitely been kicking as of late. So uh, right now, God, what is the temperature here? 70, 70 degrees. Um, yeah, which I will take in April where I'm at in Michigan because uh, we still have frost in the mornings. So to get up to this temperature is pretty good, you know, 70, so uh, Fahrenheit. Obviously, you guys know that's not centigrade or anything, but when I was in the military, I was in uh, Kuwait, you know, Kuwait, Israel, uh, Turkey, different work I was doing. I'll tell you, when I was in Kuwait, I was working on Kuwait, at Kuwait City International Airport, and it was 50 degrees Celsius, like... Oh gosh, I don't want to say three days in a row. And uh, like on CNN, they let us know that we were the hot spot for the. Uh, this is the the two days that I had to work out on the line actually with the aircraft. Uh, it was those two days we were the hottest. Basically, had the hottest uh, temperatures on the planet that day. I was super excited to share that with, you know, to to be able to experience that and share that. Um, 
with my team. Ugh, man, I was nuts. Never had so much water and basically I was just taking water and salt to my team the entire or fries to my team the entire day. That's all I was doing, running them back and forth. So but uh many that was many, many moons ago though. Many, many, many moons ago. All right, so those are up. Those are pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's take a take a look at this thing here. So here they are. Yeah, you know, uh, if you look further out, uh, that looks pretty good. Pretty happy with that as a whole. So I'm gonna go around to the outside. You guys go in front of the walker. Just go. I'm gonna trim on the outside, clean them up a little bit, and then get planting. I got some. Yeah, here you go. You can see them there. Look pretty good. Pretty happy with that. But with this though, we gotta clean up just a little bit here. You know, these guys are a little bit long. So uh so two two weeks. I got it. was it a week ago now? Today, as a matter of fact. No, yesterday, two days ago, Monday. Uh two weeks ago Monday, I had solar panels put on my house. So that was pretty cool. Just waiting on the, the electric company to tell me that I they are ah, they were all set to you know turn on the system so I can get paid for the electricity that I'm making because you know, the wife and I we don't really use all that much power so you know, six it's a uh, how many is it six and a half blink the six and a half kilowatt system where'd that go oh my goodness that went flying So in theory, this is all theory, of course, you know, until it's put into practice, who knows, but should basically be breaking even with my power production and, you know, what we use at the house. So pretty cool because, I mean, this is my view from over here. I got literally no trees, no trees, no trees blocking the solar panels in the house. So big, big fan here. So. Cool. All right, let's get some. Start get some peace around here. This will be fun. Yeah, only only garden people. You know what I mean? Hey, I'm gonna go play in the dirt, and it's gonna be fun. Oh, the birds got most of my. So my wife trimmed my dog the other day, and uh, let me think here. So I want them on that side. Yeah, hold on. I just sorry. I just had a deep thought here. This is why I talk to myself so much because it makes me have to think a little bit. I think, I think I'm going to put here and then go this direction. Yeah, so we'll put these peas here. Yeah, so we're going to put the peas here. Sun's going to be coming this direction, so they'll get some shade on my um, my kale and my other stuff. We'll get some shade, you know, at some point. The carrots and everything else, they don't really care about the shade too much, but they'll, they'll take it. Because these guys are already basically up. So, cool. Let's lower this down a little bit and have it get you a little bit closer. So, uh, chance anybody wants to say anything, I can chat back. Cool, 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 cool. Good stuff today. Today... Productive day. One right here is where they're going to be. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. All right. Look at that. Gosh darn professional there, folks. Never forget it. So, as I mentioned earlier here, what you're seeing on top here, this isn't soil. This is my uh, compost from last year, from last year's garden. So, uh, what I did here is I actually got all my compost down. Uh, check that. I did a broad fork first. Again, just to, you know, loosen everything up. I've got my, and then came over, installed these. 
I'm taking a look at these here in a second. And once I get these in for the trellis for my peas here, um, and then put, I don't know, this is probably uh, a little over an inch of compost over here for this area. So I'm going to do peas here. I'm going to direct sow some peas on this one and back here. And then two weeks from now, I'm going to do my another direct sowing of peas. So I'll end up with three, three sets of peas, if you please. I know, sorry, terrible joke. I know. Sorry about that. I apologize ahead of time on that. But anyways, these guys have been been in here living their best lives. And so the way this goes too is as these peas get larger, I'm just going to run a string basically from this side, you know, to this side over here and back, you know, and just kind of crisscross it in between them to hold them up there. Like that's really nice and loose. And every time that they get a little bit taller, just add more string to it as we go up. Super simple, you know, super inexpensive. These are not bamboo. This is, uh, these are cured uh, sunflower stalks. So from last year I had my garden, I don't know, probably, uh, it's hard to say here. Uh, let's say uh, close to 60 sunflowers. Um, I save the seeds for uh, the birds, but also during the, you know, during the summer, they like to get into the sunflowers. I do the uh, sunburst uh, sunflowers. It's, you know, they got like 4 million heads on them. So the, the birds, they love getting in there, but they're really pretty too. Like yellow auburn color it's really nice so anyways we got these guys are in here living their best life these peas we want to get them in here they can start doing what they need to do here what we got here oh sorry it's my my watch telling me that i'm being healthy i was very considerate of it i'm very thankful for that so um so with that though i don't um i don't till my garden it's not something that i do per se. Um, you know, I just use the broad fork to break stuff up. And I mean, you're going to hear folks say, you know, well, some are good, some are better, whatever. Do what works for you. I don't till mine because I'm trying to rebuild the soil after, you know, quite a few years of like neglect and stuff on this property. Um, but also, there we go, push them in. What he set. There's one. Got one in. Um. Anyways, just trying to rebuild this here. This you know this this property, uh, the soil. That's my main thing. Two. Dead center. Here. 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 I right, got to make sure this is lined up appropriately. Everything's in line because it is a bit. Okay. Cool. Ah, the sun's throwing me off. They easily grow um again in your area something to start with i would tell you honestly start with tomatoes and tomatoes and basil you can grow them right in a little planter just right by your um right by your window um if you've got a little a balcony get some sun but basil um and those herbs are super easy to grow and frankly just have basil is pretty forgiving you know so you can kind of test your test your metal there and then move on from as you get a little bit more comfortable because you know basil stuff goes goes great um goes good with a lot of food obviously um especially if you're just you know if you don't really have a lot of space like you were saying you know where you're at um yeah do that but you know in your area if you do have some land or have an ability to do that pretty much anything that likes a lot of heat which is going to be your sun which is going to be cucumbers um, definitely your cucumbers, definitely tomatoes. Um, they love, love the heat. Just got to keep them watered. You know, that's the only thing they're a little particular about that. All right, let's get these guys in here. That would be, I'd be start with. So, but yeah, you can't go wrong, you know? Just get in, get something, try, get started with something. You'll be amazed at how quickly you'll figure it out. You know, growing, uh, growing vegetables isn't hard. They know what to do. Either you just got to make sure you have the right amount of sunlight, the right, right amount of water. There's some that, you know, obviously they have different needs for soil types and stuff, but there's a reason everybody grows tomatoes. They're super easy. Do you have any pets? Uh, I got a couple dogs. I've got a, um, I've got a collie, 
and a um, basically a care. Uh, she's a Karen. She's a Karen Terrier. Is I believe the so cute little pup, cute little pup, and then there's the big old doofy uh, collie. It's kind of a dork, which we love our collie. She's just a dork, though, as most collies are. So, ah. you know, they they come out and uh, trying to think here. Our dog is a Bonnie is a rescue. She was in a really bad situation, like hoarding. People had all these dogs all like crammed into a into this small little trailer. It was awful. Uh, she and her the rest of her fam family got well, who, those they could save were saved and adopted out. Um, she needed some surgeries and stuff that some people paid for. And once she was good to go, went and picked her up from the. Uh, uh, Oh, Humane Society, you know, that we had in the area. So, and she's been with us ever since, living her best life. And the same thing with our, um, our Karen Terrier that we have, uh, Olive. She is a, um, uh, excuse me, she is also a rescue from a puppy mill where folks were basically just using her to breed her out to make a whole bunch of puppies, treating her like crap, and then, you know, they just gave her, basically gave her, gave her away at that point because she was useless, wasn't going to be making any more puppies. Now she lives with us, and she's also living her best life. So we're trying to do our part to save some of those little puppies that were treated poorly over the years. You know what I mean? So. Ah. Let's, get this, let's get this guy in. Here. Okay. You guys are all set. Oh yeah. These peas are gonna be happy to be out here. I can already tell. Happy peas. You goes over there. This bit goes here. So yeah. All in all, things are good on the homestead here. I can tell you that much. Doing all right. But yeah, I think I'm uh, just about where I'm at for today. I get these in. Let's go and do a little walk around, and then probably be in in the stream here in a minute. Because towards the end of the day here, I gotta gotta clean up. I gotta water. So go water everybody. Get them get them set in the greenhouse. Cool. All right. So. That that those those guys are in. Now you can usually you can plant peas a lot closer than that if you want to. Uh, I, I like to give mine a little bit more a little bit more space to roam, you know. But all right, so let me do this real quick. I'm gonna give everybody some something to drink here. Oh, wait, not done. One more thing over here. That's right. I could. I'm gonna do that there or there. Decision time. Where do I want to put the cauliflower at? You know, I think I may actually put it over there. When I think about it, change of spots. Which is fine. That gives me. I can put my basil in here. That'll be all right. Okay. I got some basil that I've been working on that needs a home. So. Oh boy. Looks like they're gonna be starting on my. Oh, so that's that's good news story for us. They're supposed to be uh, repaving my my road here. So that's a good thing. Good to see that. Our road's in a bit of a disarray. So. I have that. Okay, so forgot about my cauliflower there. Sorry, cauliflower. Didn't mean to forget about you. Let's get you guys in carefully, of course. Uh, 
start from the back here. So apologize for anybody who's going to be talking to me here for a second. I'm not going to be able to, I won't be able to hear you. So, but uh, let me get these guys in. We're not even, I promise I didn't mean to forget about you guys. Okay. These guys look good. Yeah, they look really good. Okay. One, actually. I don't worry about spacing too much with these. Perfect. I love about these seedlings too. They, especially on the brassicas, they're pretty robust. You, um, they can take a beating. I think it's really what I'm trying to say. You want to be obviously want to be careful with your, you know, be gentle with your seedlings, but also. Uh, these ones in particular from Nebraska's, they're not made of uh, they're not made of glass. You can you can rough house with them a little bit if you not worry about it. Frankly, I think half of them prefer it that way. So, all right. Um, so yeah, we'll see how big these guys get. This uh, this Nebraska's have been the bane of my existence on this property so far. We will get it figured out. That much, that much for sure. They're just too darn tasty to not figure out. And frankly, brassicas are just too much of the of the overall vegetable population to not figure out. It's such so useful. And you want to try to have every, you know, the other thing with the garden too. I'm sure you heard this is, you know, you want to have basically something growing on every every spot you should have something you know keep the soil covered at all times have something growing at all times no matter where you're at so these little extra spots here aren't going to hurt nobody and if they end up getting too big we, we cut them down is what it is all right Yeah, once I get these in, that'll be it for today. I have to go and, like I said, I got a water in the greenhouse. So that'll be good. Water done. And then, here you guys. Last nice bit. This guy in. Come on. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Then for my homies. A little potting soil. Just get rid of that stuff. Don't need that. These are all going to be filled with tomatoes tomorrow. So that's going to be nice. All right. So let's get some. It's time to. Get some water on to everybody here. So, man, just as a reminder, yeah, just as a catch up for anybody who hasn't, you know, I most of y'all haven't been here for a while, but has been here for a minute. You know, this is all this is on top. So you're looking at on the top here. This is compost from last year's my compost from last year's uh, garden. It's everything here. So this back corner is carrots and radishes and radishes and carrots. And then I've got next to that, I just planted today my lettuce. Uh, two different types of lettuce. I've got endive, then I've got kale and Swiss chard are in the beds closest to you. So it's getting watered right now that time of year i mean it's still cold out um what you just saw me planting in the middle there in that center section was uh cauliflower so we're just gonna let that run vertical right along the whole side there we got rain coming tonight so i'm not too worried about getting a deep soak on all this uh, i made sure to give all the seedlings a good good little chunk of water before i put them in and then 
The other part that we were here to do today was the spot right in here with my peas. As you can see, got a few of them in right down there. And these guys I will give a good little soaking to. So I can get some good water in here. So yeah, these um these supports went in really well. I've got it secured to my fence. I've got them doubled up, but these again are made out of my uh, cured sunflower stalks from last year. I cured them over the winter in my greenhouse, so they basically just turn into like bamboo, which is really nice. And then uh, tom I don't know if tomorrow, but this weekend I'm going to start some beans. I'm just going to give them a go. I think they're going to be fine. I don't think we're going to have too many more harsh, harsh uh, frosts. You know, we'll have some some. So I think the beans will be okay. I know they're not necessarily completely frost hardy, but if it looks like it's going to be too cold, I'll throw something over the top of them. Just cover them. But let's go and get my beans started out here. Some of my pole beans. And these will be used for my pole beans. Same thing for my... Um, I've got uh, squash. I've got yellow squash, summer squash, and zucchini both started. They're both going to be uh, grown on poles, which are... These will be placed in the ground and basically sets of three. So it's going to be like a little hardy, hardy post. And I'm just going to run the, grow all of my yellow squash vertical this year. And same thing with my zucchini. So that'll be great. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah, I did peas last year. Wasn't sure how they were going to do. They came up really good in this, in this soil. So it makes me pretty pretty confident that we should be have I should have a good good harvest this year and growing them all basically in line with the sun instead of against the sun they're gonna throw shade against my lettuce and other stuff here uh, later in the day which which will be nice give them a break from the sun help them be do their thing so um, oh yeah that's right one more thing I almost forgot I may have forgotten today oh got it right here Last bit. Wasn't thinking. I got some more more peas to put in. See? Every time I think I'm about done here, then I remember, like, oh yeah, I got one more thing. Which is okay. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Now these go these peas, the same ones that I have that I've already pre-planted, these ones have a two-week head start on them, so which is what you want. You know, kind of stagger staggering them so I'm I'm able to harvest them basically over the course of a couple months and I'll always have, have fresh peas, you know, which is good. So this time we are going to do these ones. The second set though is going to be a lot closer. And I can just do it with this here. So we just do a straight line here-ish. Give me a straight line-ish. I know what I'm working with. Okay. We are going to do out of there. Clay. One. Two. Three. Four. All right. There, I just counted myself. Oh, my God. I got three. I got plenty. Big chunk of, man, that clay is nasty right there. Okay. In there. That one right there. Okay. So everybody gets one to start. We'll see how we do. Oops, two. All right, well... Well, those are a little bit further down than an inch. There you go. That guy's a little further down than an inch. Fix that. That guy was definitely down further than an inch. There, if I'm being quiet again, I'm just focusing here. All right, so everybody's got one. 
That leaves me with enough for the last row. Yeah, I'll just do that. I think that's enough for everybody. They all look pretty good. These are all viable. I had them all pop up off of this from those, so I think we're in a good area there. All right, so there's that. You know, I'm definitely going to be soaking that here. I'll tell you, some of my neighbors got to love them, but man, we have some Mad Max looking vehicles around this joint. Oof. They're held together by, you know, magic. Basically, I'm waiting for people to be screaming, you know, shiny and chrome and flames start popping out, which half the time they do have flames pop out anyways. But that's, yeah. yeah we definitely have some. Michigan does not have, like, vehicle inspections. So, you know, pretty much people just kind of, you know, they make it work around here, you know. Cool. All right, so I got my second set is sewn. Good stuff there. Cool. Good day today. Oh, which I put in, I put in some more peas. So I've got a row of peas here that were um, a couple months, you know, I'm sorry, a few weeks ahead of time that I've already germinated and they're, you know, growing about yay. Now I've got my next set that I've had go in. And then I'll have my third one will be two weeks later. So every two weeks I've got fresh peas coming up over a course of like six weeks. Um, and then they, the peas, you know, they, they produce for about a month. So what that'll give me is long story short, almost two, a little over two months, two and a half months of fresh peas that I can have. Throw them in salads, make them for dinner, whatever. It's kind of nice, you know, or my favorite, if I'm just out here working, I can just grab them and snap on them and chow down. That's actually one of my main reasons for peas in the garden. They just provide me with snacks. All right. Well, that gets me there for today. Uh, again, CR7 fan, CR7, uh, CR7 fan 777, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It was kind of cool. Appreciate it. Um, again, uh, I'm here. Just you know, if you want to put notifications on for me, I, you know, I'm out in the garden here pretty much every day doing something. I try to go live, even if it's just for like a half hour. Uh, you know, whenever I'm working on stuff, just see if anybody has any questions or basically just to talk to people and say hi. So with that, been real. I'll see you on the flip side. Have a good day and grow something. You'll be better for it.